What's up guys, Shane here from Duke Deck 3D Printing and today we're making a DIY resin curing station. Welcome back, as I said, a DIY resin curing station. You can buy them. Uh, they range from anywhere from like $100 to like $300, depending on what you're looking for. Some of the $100 ones actually look pretty decent for what it is, especially when you're spending like four or five or a thousand or two thousand dollars on a printer. A hundred bucks kind of doesn't really mean a whole lot at that point. But I wanted to see what it'd be like to make my own. And there are several guides online on how to do this. So I kind of just pieced together different ones and gonna make my own. So now what is a resin curing station? A resin curing station is for SLA prints. As some of you may know, I recently picked up an Indycubic Photon and I've been obsessed with printing with it. It has been so much fun, uh, but I haven't had a chance to make the actual curing station for it yet. So I've just been using this uh, nail uh, UV dryer thing that like when you get your nails did, you like put your hand in there and it, you know, emits UV light. Uh, this one actually uses tube lights instead of some of them use LEDs. This one just seemed to be a little more powerful, uh, so that's why I chose this one. Uh, it's a nice little compact size. But uh, anyway, so what you have to do is the UV cures your resin so they can be handled by your hands because up until it's cured, um, you don't want to get that on your hands because it uh, could, you know, you could have a reaction or things like that. Uh, so it's not something you want to touch. So have the curing station, it cures it, takes about five to 10 minutes on each side, and then you're good to go to do post-processing on it after that. So if you wanna paint it, polish it, anything you wanna do, you can do that. So firstly, let's talk about the things you need. And we're gonna need a, obviously, an SLA printer, because if you don't have a printer, you don't need to do this. So once you have that, you need some supplies to make this thing. And first off, we're gonna need is this Nail Star. Um, again, it's just a nail uh, UV lamp thing that you use and I have it opened up here. So it just basically is you put your hand in there and there are four bulbs you can see in there. I can take this out, you can see them a little bit better. So there's one, two, three, and four in there. And this one, the power rating was, uh, this was 36 watt. Some people would re recommend it like 40 watt ones if it was LED, but a lower wattage on the tube should be better apparently. I don't know, but uh, either way, this is just what I got. I think this was 20 or $22 maybe on Amazon. So I think this will work out really well. And what I have been doing is there's actually a little bit of resin on the uh, mirror there. That's really hard to see. And I've just actually been, just had that kind of laying on the ground and I just had this just propped up and would turn it on and just flip my model around again just because just doing the initial testing of that printer that's what I needed to do you could just leave it like this to be honest if you're doing really really tiny prints and just set them in there again this reflective bottom reflective all around and do it for 10 minutes and you'll pretty much have the whole thing done but we're doing things a little bit bigger than will fit in here and you're gonna need a bunch of aluminum foil or aluminium as some folks might say this is a really cheap one i got at the store i think this was maybe a dollar fifty for um a couple meters it was like seven or eight meters in here and i bought so i bought uh several of them just because i wasn't quite sure how much i would need or how much would screw up it is a little thin which i'm a little worried about uh, but i didn't want to use like the reynolds like more expensive stuff all right and then you're gonna need some kind of box so this is just a small box i had from a recent uh, 3d printer that i had um, used and it will fit pretty well because this entire piece will fit on top without a problem because this is basically how i'm going to situate it is once we um, I'll end up outlining or should go through that, but this is just gonna sit on top so I can take it off, set my model in, and go from there. And there is one more part that I'm missing, and that is a little turntable that you need, and it actually is a solar one, so the UV light will actually make it turn, and it's $10 on Amazon, super duper cheap, and I'm waiting for that to come in the mail. It should be here literally any day, but I wanted to get this build going uh, just so I could at least put a part in there and start curing inside of this, but you're gonna need that as well. So when the light turns on, it will make that turntable turn and set it for a few minutes, let it do that, and then you're done. You know, there's no reason to turn it or anything like that because it's gonna get all the sides, obviously, except for the bottom. So uh, you'll have to cure that separately, but it's still, it'll do the job. Uh, for tools, just an X-Acto knife, a uh, pair of scissors might be needed, and I just gotta grab a magic marker somewhere and be able to mark this and we can get started. I might have just showed my age a little bit. I said magic marker, a Sharpie. Uh, they were called magic markers when I was a kid, and I still call it that, but yes, a Sharpie is what you'll need. Uh, all right, let's get this set up and get to it. 
All right, so here's my box. Again, I went ahead and taped all the sides because I don't want to use the part with the flap and I'm gonna let that be a side of it. I'm gonna end up cutting into one of the top sections. And the easiest thing to do here is we're gonna take out the drawer from there. I'm kind of just gonna set this right on top of where it's gonna be. So it's gonna sit on there just like that. This is how it's going to end up curing. We'll end up blocking this off uh, in a minute, but for right now, I just want it to be basically right there. So what I'm gonna do now, is I'm gonna take my marker and I'm going to outline inside where this touches the box. And that is gonna be my cut line right there. So a little bit on there, doesn't matter. So now I know right there, that's what I need to cut out. I'm gonna cut that square out and we'll go on from there. All right, so we're gonna save this piece because we're gonna need that to close it up. But this is basically uh, where we are now. So the thing is that this is plenty, this box is small, but it's plenty big for the size of prints that come off of the anti-cubic photon. Now, if you have a much larger resin printer, you might wanna look for a larger box. Some people actually use the one that came with the printer. I prefer to keep my printer boxes for whenever I move, which I move frequently. So for me, I want to keep that uh, totally separate. So all I'm going to do now is the flap right here on the bottom, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, just tape that down so it stays out of the way. So basically I'll end up taking it apart and set it right down in the bottom there. So okay, now we're going to get to the, the probably the more difficult part of this build and it's going to be the aluminum foil. You can use your box as a template basically to kind of stretch it over here and know where to bend it and go from there. So I'm gonna to try to do that and see how that works. Uh, and then basically then you can kind of like shimmy it in there. Um, you could also cut open. So you could leave one side of the box open here and then you can easily set it in there. I did already tape all this up. I guess I could cut it. It might make it a little bit easier, but I literally just taped that shut even more. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Jay, you just need to get the inside covered uh, with aluminum foil. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. Uh, one thing to note is that uh, aluminum foil has two sides, a shiny side and a dull side. You want the shiny side facing inside the box. That way you get the most reflective light inside the box to get all the different angles of your print. All right, so there, everything in there is uh, fully coated in aluminum foil. It's not too bad. It's not, uh, definitely not perfect, but what in life is, you know? This stuff is definitely like super duper uh, crinkly, so it got a lot of cranks in it. I'm hoping that doesn't really affect it, but I guess there's only one way to find out is when I go to do it and see if it screws up at all. I'm just tacking down a few of the little, just the corners, just keep everything as like one solid piece as much as I can. So yeah, so it's gonna sit like that with the part up top. We take our nail star, we line that up there. And now we've got this big opening right here. I'm gonna go ahead and somehow make this cover that. I would cover it that way mostly, right? So that is just enough to keep light from uh, leaking out in there. Let me show you what this looks like now some power here. So again, the last part that I can't show right now is the little turntable. What I'm gonna do is once I get that, put some aluminum foil over the top of it, just to kind of coat that also to kind of save the piece in case any resin drips out. That can easily be replaced. That's gonna just sit down in the bottom. I'm going to turn this on. And then it just sits on there like that. And there is my resin curing station now for all the upcoming prints that I plan on doing. Wasn't too bad, pretty easy. Again, this cost total 
about $30. So you can do it 33 maybe with uh, depending on again how much you splurge on uh, aluminum foil. I thought I was going to need more. I thought I was going to double it up, but yeah, I didn't even go through one roll and I bought three like an idiot. Oh well, I have it now for any future projects. The other thing I think, uh, I guess I did kind of forget to talk about this. So with this Nail Star deal, uh, it has a timer on the back, so it can either do 120 seconds constant or 80 seconds. Constant only lasts for a few minutes. I have to go to the manual and see actually how long it actually does last. But I usually just do it on that. I set a timer on my phone for 10 minutes and then I flip the part uh, because obviously the 180, that's three minutes. It's not long enough. And I don't want to keep, keep back and keep hitting the button to turn it back on again. So that just goes right on there. I like it. I think this is a nice, pretty easy uh, DIY project to do. So if you have a resin printer at home and you're kind of, or thinking about getting one and you're wondering how do I cure, this is going to be a quick and easy way for you to do that. So this is going to go down on my table uh, where I process all of my prints and this once I take it out, put it in here, turn it on and let it roll. So thanks for tuning in guys. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and if you guys want to build this yourself, I'll put a link down in the video description for everything except for the cardboard box. Obviously uh, you'll have to find something you have laying around. Again, you can use pretty much any box you want. Uh, this is about a one foot cube, which is plenty big enough for the any cubic uh, photon prints. But again, if you have something bigger, you're going to want a bigger box. So just kind of be aware of that uh, whenever you're sizing it appropriately. But if you want to purchase any of these things, that, uh, links will be down in the video description. Uh, they are affiliate links, so if you guys purchase any of that using my links, I greatly appreciate that. And I hope you guys found this video useful. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up. If not, thumbs down. Either way, talk in the comments down below. Love to hear from you guys. If you guys want to stay in tune what's going on when awesome project this come out, make sure you become a subscriber. Hit that bell icon. You get part of the notification squad, and you'll know when new videos come out. If you want to help me out financially to build projects like this, consider becoming a patron. Dollar is all it takes to get access to my Patreon feed and the after show other features, other uh, bonuses are in there as well. So be sure to check that out. Other ways you can help out one-time links or again, affiliate links down below, coupon codes as well. Make sure you check those out and use those. And even if you just watched, you guys are awesome. So thanks for tuning in guys and until next time, happy printing.